Why, hello there, everyone. It's Sunday night, and we're going to do a recap of NFL Week 7. It's already been completed. The, the night game is about to happen um, with Pittsburgh and Miami. Then we're going to talk about hockey, and then we're going to finish off with NBA, which is still in progress for most of the games tonight. So uh, inter interesting look at the board today. Uh, a big chunk of losses essentially at the top with the exception of Cincinnati and then a big chunk of wins at the bottom. There were five underdogs on here and two of them hit at the bottom. Houston blows it. San Francisco, I will discuss uh, something that annoyed me enough to make a programming adjustment for next week's file, which I will talk about before we're done here. And um, yeah, so the, the underdogs go two and three, which is... Actually, it is it does make you money if you got these lines because this is over three to one, but but barely and ridiculously, and I'm not proud of what this did because this is a really confusing um, board. So, so let's talk about having um, personal and emotional issues is what somebody commented in one of the videos about what's going on with Brady and what happened here. Bunch of new guys on Carolina that essentially made any prediction on this game apparently worthless, and also Tampa Bay is like not good, like. We don't think Tampa Bay is going on a run. They don't look like other teams that are crushing it, like Buffalo, like even the Jets. Like I, I would expect the Jets to crush Tampa Bay right now. So, I mean, what? You know, who would have thought that? But that is looking like what's happening, and I don't know if there's a recovery from the way they're going. So this was a minus 720 line. The only good thing I told you in the video is it's a ridiculous line. You can't do anything here. But it did not, you know, like not cue you in that Brady was going to basically have a therapy session during this game and not – not do any scoring uh that, that's what it look like so i don't know what to say about that i every time i turned on the game to listen to it on the radio it was in spanish and <laughs> didn't, I, I couldn't tell what was going on so even though i sort of pretend like i speak spanish cincinnati at least covered and did what they're supposed to do that was good okay chargers did not and their defense didn't show up and they lost to seattle at home indianapolis you get the low scoring game that the algorithm predicted but you get indianapolis not being a good team and losing to Tennessee. And I saw this game. And so I went into the projection pivot sheet. I tried to figure out why do we have Tennessee so low? Why do we have Indianapolis higher? What's going on? Um, and it's because the way that Tennessee plays heavily relying on Derrick Henry distorts it. Like he's the most powerful running back of any one of the running backs, but it, kind of artificially lowers everybody else's scoring stuff because other people, I guess, don't get involved as much. So it makes them an interesting team. I heard a stat while listening to the fourth quarter of that game that Tennessee had not scored in the fourth quarter all year. This is week seven. I was like, no way. Like, no way. That was, that, that's an amazing stat, if that is true. And they did, I think, kick a field goal and, and maybe get some more in this fourth quarter. But Anyway, so they're they're deflated, and I just I didn't really know how to fix that, other than to use more defensive injuries and and stuff like that to try to artificially change the score a little bit off of other factors and points. But it's just tough, and so I don't like losing that game there because popular wisdom said don't take the Colts. You know, Tennessee's a stronger team. They they played well better last year. Like they have Derek. Yeah, a lot of reasons. Now, this San Francisco game does not make me as angry. It just makes me uh, make it imperative for me to change some coding in the file, and I'll explain why. This said San Francisco wins 28-22. Guess what I didn't talk about at all in the video yesterday? For some reason, I didn't realize it until afterward. Did you see the alternate score? Did you see this 24-31? Did you see 61% injured San Francisco defense? I did not until after the video and after making wagers on the game. And I was like, oh, my God, this right here has to be now the score that shows up here, which means I'm going to do work on the cube before week eight, and I'm going to add defensive injuries, and I'm going to add that into the point projection adjustment, and I'm going to write those formulas so that we only have one score that shows up right here and no more alternate score. This will be the alternate will be the new score, the new score. <laughs> That's what it's going to be. Opponent's new score. Um, and it's going to be the only one and this stuff will be gone. We'll just do it that way because we have to have just one. 
because I don't want to keep saying, oh, we should be looking at the alternate score, looking at the alternate score, and then we're not looking at the alternate score when it comes to projected margin of victory, when it comes to spread, uh, sort of when it comes to over under, but not when it comes to spreads. And it ends up, I end up saying, well, this is the better one and then not having it here. So that's changing for week eight after, after screwing that up. Uh, because it did say San, it did say that San Francisco D is not there and Kansas City puts up a ton of points. It said go way over and Kansas City goes way over and that was the right play in this game. And, and there it got it almost right. Houston is not a good team. And the Raiders, I mean, they, they had it for a while and then the Raiders needed to score at home. The Raiders can at least put up points at home and Houston d- doesn't hang on. So hopefully that's just a regression to the mean and we get more negative Houston stats in here. Um, that brings that down. It brings the Raiders back up to normal. Um, the rest of this was okay. I mean, the Ravens win and don't cover, just like the algorithm said. Cowboys win and do cover. Algorithm got gave too many points to Detroit, but let's just always discount Detroit extra. The Jets win. <laughs> Jets win. The Commanders win. I was too scared to bet it, but the Commanders hold on and win and break out of a sl- Heineke is all right. I got to admit, Heineke is definitely the, the franchise type QB. He's got a personality. He, he, he goes off his emotion and he's going to screw up sometimes like he did at the beginning of the game. He's going to come back and win. He does have a good storyline. Uh, so I'm okay with Heineke. Um, next, Giants win. Jacksonville finds ways to lose. So this is deceptively pretty good down here. It's just masked by ridiculousness and utter ridiculousness right here. But like I said, the Niners this is screwed up. This is actually flipped. So I look at this as a seven and four day by point projection, because you should be using the alternate projected score. And the only game with an alternate projected score that was different was that one. And it was a massive injury of San Francisco defense right here. So, all right, that's football. There's a Monday and a Sunday night game. Whatever. We'll open up everything for a second, but the, you can see where the Miami game is up here. Also a game I think the algorithm is overestimating Miami because they have not been playing well in Pittsburgh. It just finds weird ways to stay in big games. Tomlin's a good coach, and I'd be surprised if they don't cover 7.5. I took Pittsburgh plus 7.5 because it just – even though the algorithm says no, even though I'm going against the algorithm like I always – what's the, what's the alternative score say? Hold on a second. What's the real ones say that we care about? This one. This one says 28-21. That means that that Pittsburgh does cover plus seven and a half, just barely, right? Because it's a seven-point difference. Um, so, yeah, Pittsburgh finds a way to hang in these games, and I'm just I'm, I'm concerned you're going to see another a continued chunk of loss. I think the Patriots will beat the Bears, but I don't think that uh, – I, I think the Steelers are in for, for upsetting this game, actually, tonight, um, just on – I don't know, just just on gut feeling, but never listen to me. Always listen to the algorithm. Um, when the algorithm's getting better, so we'll be doing work on it. That's what I do. That's how I make them the best. I keep doing work on them if they if they stop working right. So, hockey. Um, good things with hockey were Detroit over Anaheim, crushing it pretty well. Um, covering covering multiple goals. Chicago and Seattle, the original version I emailed out and talked about last night, I believe it was like a 4.1 to 4 game, which is exactly what happened rounding. Chicago beat Seattle just barely in a 4-4 tie, I think it was. The the score changed when I brought in the correct goalie of Staylock and Jones, I believe the correct goaltenders, and and it still had Chicago winning. I bet Chicago today they won. bet Detroit today they won. I bet the Islanders today for some reason I shouldn't have. They lost, though they did fight back hard late. And Columbus, for some reason, you know, they they just tear us out. It's Halak. It's not just Sturkin. That does make a difference. But still, the Rangers should have done better, and they tried, but they just gave up even more goals late, and they lose. San Jose and Philadelphia, I'm going to check in on that really, really quickly on the phone. Because uh, San Jose, um, going up against Philly, was like the number one pick of the, the day early. So there's only four minutes left in the second at 0-0 still. So they are fighting to in a defensive battle. We'll see if Felix Sandstrom instead of Carter Hart in there in a game that predicted more goals than this. Um, we'll see what happens and what looks to be a low scoring game. Next, let's go to NBA. And we're going to check NBA scores real quick and enter in any that might be over. Oh, Washington's losing. Utah is winning 72-61 in the third. 
Minnesota is beating Oklahoma City. So, okay. So NBA will just do better than all the other algorithms, except for college basketball. It's the other one that will also do awesome like this. Um, but I think NBA actually did better than college basketball last year. I haven't, I haven't run the numbers to really compare, but it feels like it. So, well, let's talk about what this one shows and what this one does. Now, I'm going to try to shrink some things to make it a little easier to go over and a little easier to see. Some of these games are over. So the next video I'm doing about NBA, so the rest of this video is going to be NBA talk, but the next video I'm doing is going to be strictly an NBA video. It's going to be how to update the NBA algorithm for the current season. Because there are now, I, I checked standings and there are now going to be at least two games for everybody as of, I believe, today. So in tomorrow's version, I'm going to use just current season player stats and current season injury report, obviously, and current season team stats. So limited. I know it's only two games. So, so limited, but that's okay. Um, it's okay because the only way, the only way I won't do that is if today is so perfect again that I just cannot cannot justify changing it tomorrow. Because right as of right now, the algorithm has been doing really, really awesome. And what I mean by that is it's ordering things properly and it's also picking off underdogs and it's just, it's doing really, really, really good things. And, and so there was this Atlanta Charlotte game today. I, in the video where I talked about these games, I said there's a difference between games that are over 10% margin and under 10% margin. Games that are under 10% margin and the closer they are to, to zero, the more of a toss-up game it is and how ridiculously close it really is. So when you see a team at a ridiculous line and the margin is under 10%, first thing you think is take the other team plus the points. Like uh, the points were 10 here. So you can take, immediately take Charlotte plus 10 and you see this down here. But also, just like yesterday, just like what happened yesterday with the Sixers down here at minus 900, not only did San Antonio plus 13 crush it, but San Antonio crushed it and won the game, um, 114 to 105, and paid like plus 675 or something. So when you see teams with ridiculous lines down here under 10%, you take the other team, at least with the points. So today I did that. I took Charlotte, <laughs> actually took them to win at plus 385. And apparently they just annihilated it, you know, 126 to 109. Margin was low. So it's not, and even though they were injured, I was like, who cares? I was like, it still says it's super close. So why not? And there you go. You get that kind of craziness. Lakers were more hurting on the injury report earlier in the day. Here it's an even injury game. The margin's 15. They just lose and they lose a really close one. So probably still getting healthy is probably the reason for that. At least it was one of the ones that was further down, right? Washington is losing 59 to 74. Even Cleveland's got 74 right now. So it's looking like Cleveland wins this game, even somewhat injured with a 12% margin, right? Most of these teams above 10% margin are going to win. The other games going on, Utah is up 74, 64. They are plus 260 again. It is a joke that they keep getting these lines. This is the third game in a row where they're paying over two something. I hope you have them and I hope they win. I have them and I have them plus seven and a half and the plus seven and a half looks like gold and we'll see if they can hold on and win a team that's scoring a lot of points. Phoenix a little more injured than I would like, but they're still an underdog and they're still supposedly the team to pick because there's an 18% margin here. So I took them and then these two, these lines are no, no good, and I don't take teams minus a bunch of points. So I basically don't do anything on, on these games. Um, and unfortunately, as the season goes on, there's going to be a lot of worse and worse and worse lines, and then the other team plus points become so much more appealing when you can pick off games that should be closer. So there's different ways to bet and, and different things to do, but we've got another week or so left in October. I'm going to... Uh, I think I'm, I know I could run two versions, one with last year's stats and one with this year's stats to do a little comparison. I don't do them in the same file. You got to do them in separate files to make it easier, but maybe I'll do that at least to start off just so that I can give you two different snapshots because they're not that hard to create. But the next video is going to be how to update the NBA algorithm for the current season of 2022, 2023. We will go through all of the processes and that will be the main video 
it explains how to matrix players, how to keep everything updated and go through all the sheets. It's really not that bad. NBA is, I, I wish they all worked like this, honestly. I wish that, I wish I could work on something for 10 or 15 minutes a day, be pretty confident with it and it wins 70, 80% of the time, right? Um, that would be great. That would be great. And with NBA, it kind of does something very close to that. You know, like, I mean, how have we done so far this season? We're 25 and 11. We're right at almost 70%. And you can filter this and you can say, give me only um, games where, give me only games where the margin was above 10%, for example. Filters. What's, what are we doing? Greater than. Percent margin is greater than 10%. There were 14 and one. Oh my goodness. What? What? Is that right? Is that right? No, this, this margin ain't right. Yeah, sometimes you get duplicates because of the way I show the games. That's not exactly right. I gotta figure out how to show that in the pivot table correctly. But as of just all raw games, uh, it looks like we were 25 and 11 and at some point I'll be able to figure out how to filter the margin so that we can get a true answer of how that looks. I guess I just need to put game ID. Hold on, we can do this really fast. I'll show you how to do this. So instead of home or away, we're gonna grab game ID number and get rid of home and away real quick. And we're gonna say that the game ID number we want a margin that's greater than 10.1. And maybe that is right. So all, all these games have margins over 10% and these were the teams. And I could add the date in here, but it doesn't really matter. Wow, that's pretty awesome. <laughs> This is kind of like when I talk about the um, success uh, and win rate for the college basketball algorithm, I talk about the number of home teams that the algorithm chooses in college basketball. I, you don't have to do that for NBA. I've not found home in a way to have basically any influence in the game when I tested for that last year. I found it to have no impact. So it doesn't play anything into NBA, even though it plays a ton into college basketball. But in college basketball, I always say, oh, well, the home teams that the algorithm picks, they win 80, over 80% 80 of the time, and sometimes 90 is what I say, but definitely over 80. I haven't made a statement like that about NBA, about what those numbers are over 10% margin, but I believe we are doing this correctly, and I believe it is 14 and 1 this season over 10% margin. I, and we're not retroactively changing margins. I believe this is all using the same stats. That is fantastic. The only one we lost was that overtime loss with Phoenix to Portland just the other night. And that was an OT by two points. So, wow, I, I think that's correct. I mean, if people that I've been sending the file to, if you do this exercise in your file, let me know if I did this correctly because I think I did. And that is incredible. Now, of course, we'll be, we'll be adding to that stat today. And today's version, for example, um, one of these games already lost today, actually. So we're already 14 and two because the Lakers lost and they were over. So it already has two losses. Um, but but things like these games, are these four gonna win or something? The algorithm says yes. The algorithm says it's still almost in the 90% range, uh, 80, 80 plus. So to lose one of, one of these two today, like you're supposed to only lose one of these a day on average if you're getting 80% right and there's six of them. Uh, interesting stuff, right? So NBA is really, really good. And I feel good about advertising it. I, I and NFL is also good. It's not showing it enough. Um, so it needs some work. And I'm going to do some regressive work on it this week to restructure things so that so that we do what? I mean, how do you, I, know, I know what we do to get San Francisco off of here. I think... I don't know how to get Indianapolis over here, and I'd really like to figure that out. Hmm. All right. So anyway, good luck, everyone. May all your picks be winning. Um, I will be 
I will be sending, let's see what we do. I'll be doing a video tomorrow about all the sports actually, but the, the football file for week eight, I'm going to do all this work and I'm not going to talk about everything I've done. I'm just going to send it to people that subscribe to purchase a copy and we'll run with that version this weekend and we won't put it out publicly for everyone and the odds makers. And we're not going to do that this week. We're going to do some serious work on it so that we can come up with something where we have the intelligence in the file and we've got it to work better. And we know that before the lines come out, the lines will have to react. If I, if I eventually do put it public, then the lines will react at that point. But we'll see. All right, guys, good luck, everybody. I hope all your picks won today. I doubt they did, but I hope they did. Um, and in the future, may all your picks be winning.